Hello, my name is Hannah Turner, and I'm an assistant professor at the School of Information at the University of British Columbia. And I'm coming to you from the ancestral, traditional, and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. Hello, my name is Laura Gibson, and I'm a lecturer in the Department of Digital Humanities at King's College London University in the UK. Hello, my name is Clara Jimenez Delgado, and I'm a recent graduate of the School of Information at the University of British Columbia. I'm speaking to you today from the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh nations. Today, we'd like to talk to you about this collaborative design project, which is based on research funding called Amagugu Etu, Our Treasures, Understanding Zulu History and Language with Zulu-speaking communities and their belongings. Amagugu Etu and the collaboration on the Museum in a Box first began during my PhD research on decolonizing cultural heritage in the digital age. Posed with the challenge that arose in KwaZulu-Natal to connect Zulu knowledge to objects and treasures in the Cape Town Museum, we explored the possibility of collecting images and stories about objects in Iziko and bringing these back to KwaZulu-Natal. This practice of reconnecting stories with treasures can often present an opportunity or a starting point when considering the return of heritage or knowledge. So in April 2019, a group of 19 Zulu community experts, anthropologists, scholars, entrepreneurs and museum professionals convened at the Aziko Museums to conduct a three day encounter with belongings classified as Zulu by the former South African Museum, now part of the Aziko network. These included beer drinking vessels, headdresses, earplugs, snuff spoons, spears, beadwork, medicine containers and more. As well as fostering connections between originating community members and their belongings, the various workshop encounters disrupted colonial style narratives about the collection by challenging museum naming, classifying, cataloguing, conserving and storing practices. Working with the company Museum in a Box, we envisaged a process to use this tool to collect and exhibit stories about these objects that reside now in the Aziko collections. The box itself, seen here, is a small, simple audio player that can play back sound recordings from the central database with a physical prompt. In this case, image postcards with small RFID stickers attached. It's a very simple, intuitive and easy to use device. Collecting the stories and engaging the Zulu partners with the Aziko collections was an attempt to remove the authority of the institution, to counter the National Archive and populate this device with Zulu knowledge and stories. One of these boxes is now installed at the Latuli Museum, a National Heritage Centre in KwaZulu-Natal. This mobile low barrier device gives the local staff a resource now to use in educating local school groups and children and other community members, thereby further dispersing archival authority. We situate this project, the collaborative building of an oral history collection and documentation project in what might be called design-based or arts-based participatory design. We also situate it in a long history of community archives and museum documentation projects that have spanned decades both within, a, within South Africa and across the world. Since 2019, we've begun developing a project-specific database, which you'll soon hear about, and this is complete with metadata and object descriptions that have been compiled from our research in the collections from this three-day workshop. The stories and knowledges that filled the collections rooms and our lunchtime conversations uh, were documented and reintegrated into this online archive. We've built object descriptions that will be sent back to the museum in the hopes that they can incorporate some of the suggestions and information into some of these sparse records. We imagine this project as a design project in the sense used by participatory designers in that we built an interactive educational resource for sharing stories about objects. But we also conceive of this as something we built together that is not wholly archival, archival or preservative. In Hennessy and Smith's um, definition of the word anarchival, uh, the documentation project specifically rejects the desire for preservation in perpetuity and is associated outside of the institution, in this case, a museum. In this case, it exists in the realm of a public education and arts-based practice from claymaking workshops, for example, and exercises and the storytelling performances and sessions that were included as part of the workshop to the inclusion of stories about objects rather than descriptions of objects. 
The shared design is shared in the practicalities and practices of making, moving, and telling throughout the three-day workshop. Incorporating these kinds of alternative modes of description or storytelling, we argue, were necessary parts of the participatory design process. We conclude our paper by questioning what obligations were forged in this participatory design process and consider the obligations or other kinds of counter archival museum practices. As hungry academics, what have we extracted and what are our obligations because of this? I'm going to show you some of the design and description choices we made for the Ama Google A2 project website. And the first one you can see on the landing page is a thank you note to our guests, to our visitors for being respectful guests. After that, we can move over a vertical menu, which layout white was designed uh, to be most accessible from mobile devices that are most in use by the community itself. And in that menu, you can access different parts of the project. If we visit the collection page, there are two main content pages. On the second one, you can learn more about how the collection was described and catalog. And that was done with uh, community-defined uh, community categories, others from cataloging cultural objects standards uh, for heritage institution, and some concepts from the archival world. However, because we changed the name of the category, we are displaying on this table the name of the category that we chose, where it, 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 does it come from, and its name on the standard, if applicable. If we go back to the collection page and we enter the archives of the collection, you can see that each of the belongings have been displayed side by side with their photo and name in Isisulu. And if we go into one of them specifically, we have displayed the, it's the, uh, the belonging name in Isisulu and its cataloging number for the South African Museum, if available, if known, its photo the pronunciation of the belonging in Isi Sulu by a member of the community, Tandi Numalu. Impepo. The different categories described. And at the end, if available, if it was made, there is also a link to the museum in a vault, uh, in a box vault, where visitors can access the card that was made for the museum in a box. So that would include the image of the of the card and the uh, and the recording that will play whenever the card is put on top of the box. This work has also raised a question for us as researchers. In making something together and producing a tangible effect, how can we also produce something other than or against institutional archives? We posit that the work done through the process of creating Nama Gugu Atu resource, both the website and the Museum in a Box tool, demonstrate a kind of what Springer has called anarchival responsibility, which requires a willingness to respond and some kind of collective action. The transformation from one form to another and the movement through different states of being in the archive is a key focus of Kate Hennessy and Trudy Smith's work on anarchival materiality. They conceptualize this destabilization as a kind of generative entropic force. They call to attention the precarity of the archive as an institution and objects that resist the archival force to preserve deemed fugitives. Thinking through this destabilization and the movement of objects outside of the museum context in the Amaguguetu project has likewise been a generative force. And the stories produced by the participants continue to replay, be replayed at a new locale far away from the confines of the museum in Cape Town. It is this movement or generative entropy uh, that we see as valuable and that came directly from the participatory design process noted here. Designing for the counter archive we found required the incorporation of non-traditional aspects of museum and archival work like performance and artistic reproduction. While the small nondescript storytelling machine, the museum in a box, is an effort to produce something useful for a particular setting about a particular collection, it has exceeded our expectations and we hope it provides some insights into the kinds of works that can be done beyond institutional repositories. It allowed us to encapsulate the community experts insights of the collection into a portable object that not only acts as a counter narrative and an archival instrument, but also allows for those belongings and their stories to break free of institutional constraints and potentially inspire new narratives and storytellings wherever they go.